Hello and welcome to LFC Focus. It's time for another transfer news show. Now, of course, the window closed last week in England, but there is still plenty of time for clubs around Europe to get their business done. And that does mean that we may still see a few outgoings from Liverpool between now and the end of the month. So starting off with the goalkeeping saga, which has not ended despite the signing of Alisson, there is still news about whether any of Liverpool goalkeepers will leave. And at the moment, it's looking possible, according to Turkish football, who... I do have a little bit of a history with Liverpool fans, so I feel like we always have to take their stuff with a pinch of salt now because they were the ones who kind of kept the whole Vida rumours going and I think the Yerry Mina stuff as well. I'm kind of concerned that they have picked up that Liverpool fans have come as fairly easy clicks when you put out clickbait news articles on Twitter and stuff like that when it comes to transfers. So, like I said, take everything they say with a pinch of salt, but they have reported that Liverpool will reportedly allow uh, Loris Karras to leave the club on loan to Turkey this summer. Now, Besiktas are apparently looking at bringing him in on loan, which Jurgen Klopp would be fine with, apparently because he's interested in seeing whether you're, whether Loris Karras will be able to clear his head in a loan away from England. And I think this is something that we all have kind of agreed on, that the player, if he does want to get his career back on track, it's not going to happen at Liverpool, and it's probably not going to happen anywhere in England at all, for that matter. So, a loan abroad is probably the best way for him to sort his head out, so it would certainly represent a good move for the player, and I think from Jurgen Klopp's perspective as well even if he sees Carrius just as a long-term backup at Liverpool or something like that or even if we're just looking to get the most money out of him in the transfer market as we possibly can then a loan to help him build up his form and his confidence is probably the best move for him now it's quite interesting there are a lot of little caveats to this kind of move one of them being the Turkish lira crisis I mean that's something that I never expected to be talking about on this channel but there is a bad economic in, uh, situation in Turkey apparently and that's what pre that's what's preventing them from buying Loris Karras permanently. They simply cannot afford to bring the player in and pay a transfer fee for him. And also, because of that crisis, this does also hinge on them selling one of their star players to just free up space on the wage bill as well. Apparently, they're either looking to sell Alvaro Negredo or Domagoj Vida, who we all know about, because like I said, Turkish football made plenty of reports linking him to Liverpool earlier on in the summer. So we could have actually potentially done ourselves a favour there by buying Vida in the first place. But as it stands, Besiktas will We'll need to get rid of one of those star players to be able to afford Loris Karras's wages. So, you know, the window does close on September 1st in Turkey, so there's still a roundabout or potentially even exactly two weeks for us to all get this done, so I can't see anyone really panicking, but like I said, a lot of it does hinge on what else happens in the transfer market with regards to players that Besiktas will be looking to sell between now and the end of the month. And talking about things in the transfer market being linked and stuff like that, it's interesting that this entire situation is almost linked to us actually trying to sell Mignolet in the first place because there's also been a lot of talk about Mignolet leaving the club this summer. There was plenty of stuff about him going to Barcelona, which was a little bit mad earlier on. I couldn't really see that happening and that hasn't materialised either. But we know that Mignolet wants to leave because he does want first team football and all of that. So it's highly likely that he will leave the club at some point, preferably this summer, because we would get the most money for him. But his potential move to Napoli fell apart because Napoli managed to get David Ospina in from Arsenal instead on a low with a view to buy option or something like that. So that is essentially why Besiktas now want Laris Karras because they also wanted David Ospina. So it's kind of, you know, a swings and roundabout situation we've been done over in that we haven't been able to sell Simon Mignolet, but it has opened the door for Loris Karras to leave as well. And to be honest, I think Loris Karras leaving on loan is probably a good thing because at the end of the day, we have to keep at least one of these goalkeepers. We can't sell both of them because there is a question about who we'd have as backup instead. You know, backup goalies are really, really difficult to buy and obviously we can't bring any more in now because the transfer window in England has closed in terms of bringing players in. I think Grabara and Kelleher you know looked all right in pre-season but probably not ready to take on the mantle of backup. It's of course unlikely that they play any games but should Carrius get an injury or a suspension whatever you don't want to be throwing Grabara or Kelleher in just yet into what could potentially be very key games. So I think we need to keep one of Carrius or Mignolet and if we're going to lose Carrius on loan that's probably a good option for him like I said to help him build up his confidence and then maybe keep Mignolet for this season because you know he's not a great goalie but he's fine as a backup and then he can go next summer and will address the carrier situation there because I mean, personally, I would still rather Carriers left permanently because I think his future does lie elsewhere. 
there. He's like Mignolet in that he will not want to be back up. You know, no goalies want to be back up at the end of the day. Like I said, it's really difficult to buy goalies as backup, so it's best to, to just keep what you have, even if that means the players aren't going to be super happy with their situation. So, you know, I'd rather Karius went away permanently and we just kept Mignolet or something like that. But like I said, this could potentially help Karius's confidence. And when he comes back to Liverpool, he could end up being a really useful backup, even if it's just for a year or something like that. So yeah, the goalkeeper situation looking very interesting at the moment. Like I said, plenty of time, but it does hinge on a few more things happening at Besiktas before they will be able to push through and complete that move for Loris Karius, which probably does represent the best deal for all parties involved. So elsewhere, another report from our friends over at Turkish Football. They are suggesting that Fenerbahce have made Ragnar Klavan a top target after Mourinho reportedly blocked a move they were trying to make for Marcos Rojo. So Rojo is staying at Old Trafford and they now want to bring on in Ranyar Klavan as a centre-back instead. And apparently these talks have already been going on for two weeks. So, you know, fingers crossed that if Liverpool are looking to get this done, it's one that could get over the line because there's already a communication channel established between the two clubs. I mean, it does make sense financially and it also certainly fits with the narrative that we are trying to sell Ranyar Klavan. You know, those reports came out around about a week ago or something like that. So that fits in with the idea that we have been negotiating with Fenerbahce. Like I said, it does make sense financially because I think, you know, not only does it free up space on the wage bill, but also Ranyar Klavan is quite an old footballer and he's only going to get older. So, you know, if we want to eventually make money out of his sale, when you consider how much he's probably going to play this season, and it is essentially a gamble because we could have an injury crisis and he could become hugely important for us. He could be playing Champions League semi-finals in April or something like that. But we could also actually get away with it on injuries and have no problems whatsoever. And he'd end up playing, you know, a maximum of maybe three hours worth of football over the season. So if that was the case and that he's not going to play many games, it certainly makes sense to sell him this summer. But like I said, it is a gamble from Liverpool because that leaves you with the situation of probably relying on Nat Phillips as backup. And I think it's a good situation for Nat Phillips because like I've said in these the post-match videos for the preseason games on this channel. I've actually been fairly impressed with what he's done, and I think he certainly he deserves a path into the first team. At least, you know, he doesn't deserve a situation where there's no way he's going to break into the side. I'm not saying that he should actually be starting games on a regular basis, but I think he certainly deserves a situation where he knows if he carries on putting in good performances for the under 23s and in training and stuff like that, and he certainly gives a good impression to Jurgen Klopp, then he will have the opportunity to play in the first team at some point. So, you know, like I said it is a gamble because I know some people have slightly more negative views on that Phillips do let me know in the comments below how you feel about him because I think it's a very interesting situation whether or not people would trust him being a backup center back going into this season but if you ask me it is probably the best kind of move because like I said frees up space on the wage bill probably gets us the most money we're ever going to get out Ranyar Klavan and it is a gamble but it is highly possible that Klavan would play a very small amount of football this season anyway so up next my Marco Gritch, this is according to the Yorkshire Evening Post. There are some reports about whether or not he would be joining Leeds on loan. Now, this has kind of not been quashed, but sort of played down by reporters from the Yorkshire Evening Post. They've essentially said that Leeds, who are one of the clubs that are kind of interested have been holding talks with Liverpool. They've expressed interest in the player, but they're not like, you know, hugely wild about him. They're not desperate to bring him in like Cardiff were and like Middlesbrough were as well. They're just kind of looking at him as an option and it's more actually Liverpool who are trying to get this deal over the line because Liverpool are currently looking for a club for him at the moment. I think it's very interesting the situation Marco Gritch finds himself in at the moment because apparently what Liverpool are trying to do is tie him down to a new deal because his current one has two and a half years left to run and then loan him out to to get more experience. So Liverpool certainly see a long-term future for Marco Gruic at the club. You know, we've always been impressed with him in the past from what we've seen in pre-season. It's very clear there's a lot of potential there and he did do pretty well in his loan uh, on at Cardiff in the second half of last season. So there's certainly a future for him at the club, but there does seem to be a disagreement over how to go about it. You know, Marco Gruic so far has already rejected loan proposals from Cardiff and from Middlesbrough. So it feels like, you know, it's hard to tell at the moment whether 
whether that's just because he's looking for the right club, he's looking for a team that's going to really, you know, boost his abilities and actually put him in contention to start in the Liverpool team, or whether, you know, he actually is more interested in seeking a, either a permanent move away or trying to break into the side now, you know, because time is kind of running out for Gruic. He's been at the club a while and I feel like his stock has gradually dropped over the years ever since he had that incredibly impressive preseason in his first summer at the club. So I feel like he probably wants to get something done quickly. I mean, it's interesting that Liverpool actually rejected a loan and then possible buyout clause option from Torino who are looking to bring him in on loan for the season and then have it in his contract that if they wanted to, they could buy him for £9 million next summer. I mean, one of the problems with that is, of course, that it doesn't match up with our value the player we want 20 million pounds for Marco Gruich so 9 million pounds is absolutely nowhere near that so it kind of makes sense why Liverpool weren't really willing to entertain that prospect and the idea that unless I know I know maybe Torino would have been interested in just taking him on loan but it does feel like Liverpool are currently trying to push him out on loan and Marco Gruich is putting a little bit of pushback against that so certainly one to keep an eye on between now and the end of the window because like I said he has shown huge promise and while Liverpool's midfield department is quite congested at the moment it's certainly a very difficult one for a youngster to break into as we'll probably find out as someone as talented as Curtis Jones will probably not end up getting that much game time this season despite how impressive his preseason performances were so one to keep an eye on but personally I would just love to see Marco Gruic go out on loan to a proper big club you know preferably a Premier League club or a top flight club from somewhere else in Europe really prove himself and come back to the club as a squad option because like I said he was such an exciting player when he first arrived someone that I really wanted to see succeed and I just just feel like you know if we could get the best possible version of Marco Gritch in our midfield then we'd have a hell of a player on our hands so finally the last bit of news not quite Liverpool news but if you are interested in the title race which hopefully Liverpool are because we do want to be in that come the end of the season we all know now that Kevin De Bruyne has suffered an injury and it could potentially affect Liverpool in a positive way and look I'm not going to stand here and say yes Kevin De Bruyne's been injured let's all go out and get the pyro out and sing LA LA, LA in the streets or anything like that you shouldn't celebrate another player's injury because it, it's bad but it would be remiss to suggest that it's not potentially a positive sign for Liverpool because we are hopefully going to be in direct competition with Manchester City for the Premier League title throughout this season and as of yet we don't really know what the extent of the injury is you know it could be anywhere between two months some people are suggesting four months according to his agent it's apparently it is very similar to the one that he suffered a couple of years ago it's in the same knee and apparently he's got the same kind of pain so that suggests that it's probably not ligament damage which means it's almost definitely not going to be six to nine months or anything like that so he should be back at some point during the season and back to his full fitness before the end of the season but at the moment it's very much up in the air how long Kevin De Bruyne is going to be out for and it will certainly be a very interesting one because you know you'd hope that City are going to be under more pressure this season to win games you'd hope that Liverpool will be the ones putting them under that pressure saying you know we're winning all of our games can you keep up with us and if they haven't got Kevin De Bruyne it does put a lot of pressure on other midfielders who maybe aren't as as youthful and sprightly as you'd like you know Fernandinho is in his 30s David Silva as well their lead creative forces in his 30s as well so it'll be interesting to see you know they've got Bernardo Silva so he's a very talented creative player one who can play in in that De Bruyne role of either in the midfield or as a member of the front three and he's also probably even a little bit more versatile than Kevin De Bruyne because he can play very well on the wings as well so it'll be interesting to see how Man City get around this but it does open the door up almost for Liverpool to just put a little bit more pressure on them because without one of their key players you know someone who's been very useful for them in doing things like breaking down low blocks and stuff like that which as Liverpool fans we know is something that you come up against a lot when you're a title challenging Premier League team so certainly one to keep an eye on again how Man City cope with that and also it'll be interesting to find out just how long Kevin De Bruyne is out for so that is all for today's news show thank you guys very much for if you did enjoy this video then hit that like button give me your opinions on everything that I've said so far today in the comments down below do you think that we should be loaning out Loris Karras or do you think we should try and sell Mignolet do you think it's a good idea to get rid of Ranyar Klavan as well what should we do about Marco Gruich and how do you feel about Kevin De Bruyne being injured for Man City apart from that don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well if you're new around here check out some of the other videos that have been out on the channel over the past few days as well don't forget to follow at LFC Focus or TV on Twitter and I'll be back either tomorrow or on Saturday for the pre-match content for the Monday night game against Crystal Palace. Bye for now.